This show is brought to you by Databrill, the scalable Amazon PPC management for large Amazon sellers and brands. Visit sellersessions.com forward slash agency for more details. Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. Again, we bring back Anthony Lee. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Yeah, good, good. So guys, we've got an interesting show today. We're going to be covering Amazon Bro Science. Something that was valid six months ago can change today. So the difference is if someone says to you, do this to your title, but you don't measure it, then to me, that's bro science. But it is difficult to measure because on Amazon, we've got no way of real, doing real tracking in the sense of, all right, we can do some split testing with certain tools, which even the terminology of the split testing isn't true split testing because it's not 50% of the traffic sent to you know the control page and then one to the b page for instance it's rotated over a 24-hour period because the limitations of the technology so what's your thoughts on the whole bro science thing versus the real true data and what are some of the things that we can do i love how you call it bro science i think that's a great term um well uh you know for starters um i'm i'm still confused as to how people fall into this trap where they'll go to Facebook and they'll see somebody that maybe they've been following for a little while. And, and, you know, so they respect them and then they say something and they take it as law mm. immediately without testing. Yeah. And I don't care how recent the data is. Like if you're talking about your source of income, you need to test it for yourself because everything like Amazon is such a complex ecosystem Whatever that is might only work for 90% of the categories, but you might be in that one category that for some reason it just hasn't been implemented yet, right? Yeah. That happens all the time. Amazon makes changes category specific. So it's like why you wouldn't just test it and instead you just change things and take it as, as law. And then another thing that you mentioned that I am seeing too is um, some people will find an old video and the next thing you know, there'll be all these skies falling posts and the video is like eight months old yeah. and the problem's already been fixed. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to come down on people and say, you guys are, are not being intelligent about this, but it's like, cause I, I, cause I get it. You're emotionally attached to the source of freedom. That's essentially what people look at their Amazon business as like one day, this is going to provide me with the freedom uh, financial and, and time freedom that I want. So that's, I mean, it's hard to detach emotionally from that. So I get it, but you can't allow that to, to affect your decision-making, especially when it comes to, to your business. I mean, this is important. So, um, so the first step in reducing some of the damage that'll come from, as you call bro science from, from, you know, taking your, your bros word, and implementing it immediately as 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 fact is yeah. to I just want to butt in everything. I just want to butt in here. We do have a female audience as well. So it's we're using the, the term bro science because I got the word bro science from you know when you see like these bodybuilding sites and they kinda of go, Oh yeah, you mix this, 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 and this, and you add muscles this side in a few days, and people call that out as bro science. So that's where the terminology comes from not because it's uh, designated to focus on men only because we have a female audience as well. In order to reduce some of the damage that might come from, you know, mixing formulations for your optimization and your PPC or whatever, uh, just based off of hearsay, uh, it, you got to test and you have to test properly. And this, this is where it gets a little difficult because I know a lot of people, there's a lot of steps when it comes to getting your business off the ground on Amazon. So essentially what you have to do is first you have to know your metrics, right? So you just got to know uh, what you're looking at. Are you looking for more sessions? Are you looking for more conversions? Are you looking for a lower A cost on your PPC? So know your metrics. And if that means you got to do some Googling, do some YouTubing and, and just dig into the back of your seller central and, and write down things under the reports tab and look at it and go, okay, what does what? Then, that, then so be it. That's what it takes. But you need to know your metrics. So that's step one. After you know your metrics, then you kind of get an idea of what it is that's going, that you can increase to help increase your business, right? So if you're looking at your uh, business reports and you're looking at your se uh, sessions and your unit session percentage, which is your conversion rate, you can determine, okay, well, I have really low sessions. If I get more sessions, then um, I should convert more. 
And then you got to look at, well, what affects that? Right. So then you, you do some research and find out what affects that. And then you can test that. So when you have somebody come out and say, Hey, increase the traffic, you know, tenfold by doing this, you can say, okay, well, you know, a, does that thing actually affect my sessions? And if it does B, how do I test this effectively uh, so that I don't damage my business? Um, so in this specific example, one of the ways that you can test that is you can either do it manually or you can set up a split testing tool. But essentially, uh, the main thing that you have control over that affects your sessions, for example, is uh, your main image, right? That's, that's one of the main things. So if you get some advice that by applying a particular something or another to your main image, you can increase your sessions, or as they'll probably put it, your traffic, uh, then you'll either implement the split testing tool or do it manually. You change that. You record your sessions for the past week or 15 days or month or whatever. And then you change that main image. And then from that point for another week, you start recording your sessions again. And it's real simple. Whichever one has the higher amount of sessions wins. Unless for whatever reason your sessions go down, but you see your conversion rate go through the roof. In which case then you might reconsider so you do need to keep uh, all of your metrics in in mind but that's just an example of a yeah. way to test one yeah. thing at a time make sure you're testing the right metric you give it a limited time frame and then you make a decision yeah. simple and the, the, that's you, you pointed out a great thing there is that you need to focus in and know what you want from the test and what you want to achieve so let me give you an example where a test can go wrong you just mentioned sessions right so you could decide, right, I want to increase my sessions, so I'm going to send external traffic. What's really important here is the quality of the source of the traffic. If you want to increase your sessions, where is the traffic coming from? What is the quality of the source? What is the relevancy of the source and what you're trying to target? And can you turn that tap on and off? So if let's just say you want to get aggressive with PPC, you've got slight control in the terms you can pause the campaign. I know there's a bit of delayed reaction, but at least if it got too crazy, you could understand over that period of time, you could shore that traffic up. If you don't have the tools, just as simple as making a notepad with a date and write down every changes that you've made and then read back through your notes. It's going to get you part of the way there, even though it's not perfect, especially on Amazon because of the limitation of measurement. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing at a time, give it enough time. It's really a matter of, uh, of patience. And then what you just described is the reason why I said you should also have your other metrics in mind. Here's the thing. As a seller online, there's only one metric that really matters more than anything, and that's sales. Yeah. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate. I don't care, you know, you don't care probably if you only get 15, 20 sessions a day, all of them convert, and you're selling a $100 item, you're making $1,500, $2,000 a day in sales. That's pretty good. I mean, yeah, you'd want to try to figure out a way to increase that, but the point is, though, is – you're not going to look at, you know, your sessions and go, man, I'm really disappointed. These sessions are so low. It's like sales is the ultimate goal. So as long as you have that in the back of your mind, you just remember that every tweak is to better that. So that's the, that, you know, that's, that's the end result that you're looking at now. So people will make a change, right? And like, let's say the last three days, they're brand new sellers. The last three days, they've gotten like four sales a day. And they make a change and then it's almost the end of the day and they've only got one sale. Immediately they're thinking, whatever I did screwed everything up. I've got to change it back. Yeah. A, you don't know that for sure because you haven't given it enough time. And B, you know, when you're talking about sample sizes that small, like fluctuations like that are normal. Mm. You can go three days in a row, make four sales and then one day make zero. Like that happens on Amazon all the time. Q4 seasonality birthdays is it a giftable product is it a steady eddy so all you need to look at your product as well so you wouldn't necessarily carry out tests in the first two weeks of december of q4 because that's not going to give you a true reflection the rest of the year round and that especially if you're selling snow to eskimos so you need to work on what is the product what are the seasons around it? You know, like Father's Day, Mother's Day. You don't want to be testing around there. You want to find that neutral part of the year. It's still bro science. Do you know what I mean? What we're talking about here, because we, we're limited, we don't have tracking code. We can't do the traditional split testing. We don't have Google Analytics or anything like that that we can 
obviously work with. So it makes things on Amazon tough compared to your own commerce store. Um, on a different note, I want to talk about different schools of marketing, right? So let me just kind of set the scene for you here. You know, you've got, say, a Gary V versus a Ty Lopez. And I've got friends who, like yourself, we, we have a lot in common, yet we could be absolutely divided from our score of thought of marketing. Like I know that with Taylor, we've had a debate about it. And I think Sean as well, uh, Taylor Benterud and Sean Smith. I have are, debated probably the exact same thing with both of them. Yeah. I so <laughs> they, they like, I, I prefer the no nonsense Gary V type of approach. Yeah. It's like, it's a brash, it's ballsy. It's sorry. If you feel sorry for yourself, tough shit, just get over it. And then you've got Ty Lopez side of things. It's the cars, it's the laptop lifestyle, it's the beach thing, it's uh, the dream selling. So I'm completely the opposite. That's not my buy-in. What side of the fence are you sitting on? I'm definitely more with you. <clears throat> I'm a no-nonsense kind of person. But I also think that both, both can work. Mm. Um, and then again, neither can work. Here, here, here's the thing. Uh, every, there's every personality type out there. Yeah. So whoever your audience is, there's going to be a segment of them that respond to probably any type of marketing, uh, you know, personality, yeah. um, because every personality type exists and, you know, there's always going to be those people that, that respond to the pictures of the Lamborghinis and stuff like that. I mean, although if they didn't, then Ty Lopez wouldn't be as successful as he is. Yeah. And then a lot of people really appreciate the brutal honesty of uh, Gary Vee. I think um, it's not necessarily the personality that gets you in trouble. I think what gets you in trouble is when people like much like the bro science we were talking about, yeah. your gurus can also lead you astray when, when your gurus create a framework for you that's worked for them and their business model, but their business model doesn't match your business model, but you adopt their framework because yeah. you respect them so much, but then you don't realize that you have to make changes to it to fit your business model. And then you get upset because it didn't work. Yeah. That's where the danger lies. Yeah, definitely. I mean, getting into that, because there's a couple of things here. Let's talk about us as Amazon sellers that will, you know, um, want to use software, use products, use services, use courses, all those kind of things. That, and again, it's two sides. I mean, um, to, I'll come back around to this point in a minute, but I, you know, my score of marketing is PEP larger. Yeah. Or peak larger is P E P, um, L A J A, right. He's the, the founding father of conversion optimization. My score for, because before I come on items and is that when it comes to buy this funnel, it's going to change your life. And we got a 98% conversion and blah, blah, blah. That's stuff just doesn't wash with me. But because of my mindset, it's different. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying is that when you got on one side, the, the godfather of conversion optimization will say to you, don't go for best practices. You need to test everything. If someone tries to sell you something that they converted on this, it's horseshit, basically. That's that kind of mindset, you know what I mean? Because you've got to, to build an understanding of the customer, the type of audience, and you would develop your landing page or your software, whatever you're using, uh, whether it's on your website or not, to tailor to your audience in the right manner to attract the best term of conversion. And because someone has a funnel over here for a spatula, that doesn't mean you can sell a SaaS service that costs you 15 grand a month. Does that make sense? It's completely different. Or if you're selling high class cars on one side or on the flip side, you're selling info marketer stuff. They are different and there isn't a one fits all. What's your take on it? A hundred percent. Not only is that completely accurate, but it's something that I see a lot of. So right now in this industry, a lot of the mature sellers, right. Who are moving beyond uh, the newbie phases and looking to go to the next level. Um, they're enamored by the, all the idea of marketing off of Amazon. And so yeah. in their efforts to build funnels that lead back to Amazon or to their own website, they're, they're looking at um, the landing pages and the funnel structures and uh, click funnels is getting a lot of attention. 
Yeah. There's a lot of people that use click funnels uh, and they do it very successfully. Yes. The problem is, is I can't tell you how many people I run into. I see constantly coming to me and saying, I don't know what's wrong. Yeah. Uh, I've done the funnel hacker university. I've done the, you know, I, I got preloaded funnels from either Russell or um, uh, Ezra does a lot of this too. And, yeah. and, and they're just not working and they're really confused. And it's because of that, right? Because you got these guys who build, uh, I mean, you know, Russell's amazing, but he built a lot of his funnels and a lot of his experiences from selling info products, right? Yeah. Not the same thing. Yeah. And then you got Ezra who, who has a great system too. His funnels big, are big awesome. Big shout to Ez, Ev, Ezra. I mean, he's top of the game. The, out of, mm-hmm. In that world, if you say like the affiliate marketing side of things, I'm not saying that's what Ezra specifically does. He's the only one who will turn my head and I will listen to. Does that make sense? I don't listen Absolutely. to the free, free hour webinars and stuff, but I like what he does and it's pre Amazon and it's product based. And yeah, what he says, absolutely. he's very technically gifted across all types of paid search. And, you know, I, I listen to his stuff when I get time, but I don't, you know, I don't sit on free hours and I know he's got courses to sell and stuff. But yeah, out, out of that school, Ezra's, you know, top yeah. of for me. Ezra's amazing too, but even still one of, uh, like I went through some of his training uh, for funnels and, and some yeah. of the funnels he had set up were based around his uh, beauty products. Yeah. That's a consumable product. The rules are not surprisingly different for consumables than they are for spatulas. Yes. And uh, to give you kind of a prime example, fu- the, the, the fundamental, I guess, uh, you know, thing about funnels is that funnels are essentially for upsells or downsells. A funnel is essentially to get as much of the sale as possible. Yeah. And it's really hard to up or down sell if your only product on Amazon is a pair of kitchen tongs, right? Yeah. Like, are you going to sell more than one? I mean, how many people need more than one set of kitchen tongs, especially in the moment when they're like looking to buy it right now? Yeah. Oh, now, now you want me to buy a second pair? Like why? So yeah. that's where these people are, are, are running into these problems is they follow these guys, these amazing marketers, but their framework just doesn't work. And they thought that it would. And, and yeah. what you got to realize is that you have any framework, you have to test it, you have to tweak it, you have to yeah. make it work for your audience. So for, Even, just for clarity here, we're not, plat, this is not platform related. This is platform aside. It's the way that the platform could be sold in and the kind of people that use these platforms and the kind of people that you want to attract on Amazon. There's a massive difference. Click funnels over here. I don't use it, but it's seen as, as a great platform, right? And there are people, you've got this comma club thing and people are very, very successful with it. And that's great. I think what we're trying to get to the crux of here is, is it right for your Amazon business? If you're selling info products, I think that works. I mean, I'll give you another example in terms of this platform thing. Quite interesting. There's a big, big company out there that I tried to get on the show. I won't name them but they didn't want to come on the show because they were concerned about their churn rate of their business. And so what they're saying is basically, if you read in between the lines, they didn't want, not that they didn't want Amazon sellers on there, but I think what they didn't want to do is be put under the same bracket as info marketing kind of things where they, that would cause a high churn rate on their platform. Does that make sense? So Absolutely. it's quite an interesting look because you're in the bubble, aren't you? But when you look at others from the outside looking in, what they're basically saying is that we don't want a kind of, we don't want that kind of customer. We want a different kind of customer that's not suitable for our business. So it goes back yeah. to saying the platform is the platform. It's the way that it's sold and the type of customers, which another point I want to make is that your customers are not necessarily you and would be uh, react to um, the info marketing upsell cross sell style of stuff. Yeah. So let's look at the products that you sell. People might feel there's a bait and switch because the way that your platform being Amazon, the way that you sell it in that product that you bought in from China, you might have paid a dollar for, they open it and it's 
dog shit. The quality's really bad. And then you're upset because they've left you a one star review and called it a scam because the customers got seen a great listing with great images, but they were disappointed with the product as it arrived. And that's again, it's about setting the right level of expectations for your customers. Yeah. You know, you're totally right. Look at the, that exact example, right? Yeah. We'll look at a different example on Amazon. You'll see if anybody that sells a crap product does a huge marketing push, you'll see a ton of bad reviews, Yeah, but you don't see as much on wish, for example. And the reason why is because people go to wish and they know that there's like a 50% chance that whatever they get is going to be total crap because yeah. it was cheap. And they know it all comes from like cheap surplus crap that comes from Asia, right? So it's all about the customer that you are drawing to. You're absolutely right. And you have to know that. So platform aside, that is the most important thing. And uh, I'll give you another real world example of what testing can do for you. So once upon a time, Ezra did this awesome training on uh, Pinterest advertising. Yeah. And uh, he was pushing native ads, which is basically where you write this super epic blog post and then you mm -hmm. link to your products within the blog post. Yeah. And I'm in a niche where that should have worked mm -hmm. and it probably does for some people, yeah. but uh, for whatever reason, my writing style or the way I was communicating with my customer, it just didn't. I put a lot of money into that and I could not make a sale to save my life. Yeah. And I really couldn't understand why. Now I took the same format but I applied it to uh, the other business that I'm doing, um, writing books. Yes. And right now we're running ads. All of them are native advertisements. All of them are blog posts that link back to the Kindle page. Mm -hmm. And they're killing it. Yeah. I mean, all of our sales are coming through that. Like, it's pretty awesome. I'm, I'm talking, we have PPC turned on in Amazon. We don't make any sales off that. 95% yeah. of everything comes from these native ads, mm -hmm. um, which the example that was given was using Pinterest and doing it for beauty products. And then we adapted it using Facebook and, and doing info products. But it's because we understood what our, our customers, where they were located and what they would respond to. So yeah. the template was just modified and it mm -hmm. worked. And, yeah. and, and we wouldn't have gotten there though, had we not tested to find that out. Yeah, definitely. No, it's interesting. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is again, it goes back to the personality of the person that I find that we, we just talked about products. We just talked about the different types of platforms and what you would choose. Another thing I want to touch on is that, when you're selling, not the platform, but the way that you sell it, you know, it's the same goes back to if you sell courses and you want to sell a lifestyle, that can lead to disappointment as well because it's the type of customers you want to attract, right? So you might do a course where you want high volume and so that you want the type of people you want to attract is people that maybe have never been in business before that are impressionable, yeah, and are looking for instant gratification. And so what happens, that whirlwind is packaged up, sold in, and then the refunds come, then the complaints come. And that's where you have to be careful as well, which, you know, this goes back to if you take on that mindset and you try and apply that to your Amazon customers, for instance, that's the kind of reaction that you've got going to get unless you can back up all of your claims. And it's solid what you're putting forth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it goes back to knowing your customer. Um, you have to also know what their expectations are. Uh, yeah. I, I, the easiest example that you could possibly get, here's a perfect illustration. Let's mm. say you sell a handbag. If yeah. you sell that handbag for $120, the person who buys that is going to be very different from the person who buys it if you sell it at $19.99. Yeah. The person who buys it at $120 is going to be, is going to scrutinize all of the claims that you make. The person yeah. that buys it at 1999 may have very well have been a, a gift and they may or may not be that concerned about some of the, the, the claims that you make on your listing. So yeah. uh, it, it really is. I mean, and, and this all comes back to testing, right? Where, 
where are your, your, your highest conversion rates, where are your highest number, uh, uh, you know, amount of profit. Um, you know, I had a client actually, this is, uh, you know, speaking of the changing the price situation, he was selling uh, a product at like $45 and killed it for two months, three months. And then all of a sudden, you know, things just went downhill and we did everything we could to get it back there, but it's just the market changed. There was a bunch of lower price competition that came in. Uh, at the $45 range, um, you know, it was higher returns and not as many sales. Mm. And then we went all the way down to 1999. And, and I remember seeing him, his face. He's like, oh my God, I can't, this is terrible. I can't, I mean, he had the margin to play with, but he's like, I can't, I can't really be selling these. I was selling these a month ago at, at you know, almost three times the cost. We changed the price in 1999. Sales went from like, four a day to over 60. Yeah. Uh, re also returns went down strangely enough. How do your returns go down when you sell that much more? But the point is, is clearly we had tapped into the right audience for that. Well, product, you, just the, the, right. you just said the, the sales went up, but the returns didn't go up. They went down. Did exactly. They? Well, exactly. Look the return it, percentage didn't go up. Oh, percentage. I was going for it. The number of units. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, Anything you want to add before we wrap here? Uh, no, I think, I think we covered a lot of really good topics. I think the moral of the entire story is that you just got to test part of your job as a seller is to learn as much as you can about your audience, test what they like, uh, find out what they don't like, mix as many of the elements as you can that they do like for your product and your audience. And uh, that's how you maximize your profits, regardless of what anybody on the outside says. And I definitely would say uh, experience different schools of marketing and point of views. Don't just go down one lane, if that makes sense. Because if you do that, that could set you up for a fall across all of your businesses by adapting something and holding on to something that's not right. So you might need to blend that. It doesn't mean what I'm saying about uh, Pete Larger and his school of thought is right. That's just the methods that I follow. And I'm at the oper opposite end of the spectrum of the whole funnel thing. Take this funnel and you'll be successful. I just don't buy into that personally. If you're not experiencing either ends of the spectrum, you should go and try both and see what works for you. Or more importantly, what works for your audience? Because there's another uh, saying is hippo is um, the highest person's opinion. It kind of breaks down to because if you're in a, a company, the boss comes in and goes, I want to make that change there, that change there, that change there. And they've got no data to prove that on. And quite often that's what can kill conversion campaigns as well, because it's opinion based rather than working with the facts. Anthony, how can people yeah. reach you? Um, so my favorite way for people to reach me is on Facebook. If you actually go, um, to the unofficial <laughs> Anthony Lee page, yes, you can hit me up there, uh, Facebook messenger or just on the page. Um, yes. beyond that, Anthony at sixleaf.com is my public facing email address. So can yeah. you do my, can you do my favorite one? that one where you named the company the wrong way around. So you have to spell out the email address. Was it read, write publishing? Oh yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah. <laughs> Anthony <laughs> at read and write publishing.com read spelled like a name R E I D and yeah. write spelled like a name W R I G H T Yeah, publishing. Yeah. That so, was, that was still such a bad idea, but whatever it's there. <laughs> it's there. Eh? You can't change it. Okay, guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the show. If it's your first time, don't forget, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you again soon. Take care.